Hi, so for this question, we're focusing now on some revenue and expense pieces. This is a chapter three focus um, when we talk about revenues and expense. And I kind of like uh, all the way down here in the bottom right corner, um, made a couple notes. And the reason I put it on the right side is our revenue and expenses are always going to go in the stockholders equity section. Remember, go back to that page one. I showed you where all your accounts go. So if you have revenue and expenses, it's going to be in stockholders equity. Revenues are going to increase equity. Okay, revenues are going to increase equity and expenses are going to decrease equity. And just kind of look at these general terms here, you know, general definitions for, for revenue. Um, you know, go to your book in chapter three and it gives you a more detailed description of this. But, but in general, what we're thinking here is we're going to count revenues whenever we deliver a good or service. Okay, now here's where you got to be careful. Did I use the word cash here? There's, no, there's, there's nothing here that talks about the word cash. The only thing I'm doing is I'm counting revenues if I deliver a good or service. Because guess what? I don't have to collect cash when I deliver a good or service. I can give a customer a bill and they're going to pay me later. So they didn't give me cash, but I earned the revenue if I did the work. Right? As soon as I deliver work, boom, we're putting revenue in here, regardless of whether or not we collected cash. If we did not do work, we're not going to put revenue in our equity section because we did not deliver the good or service. Right? And the expenses are going to be kind of Along the same theme here, we're going to count them when we use up resources, and we want to use up those resources in order to, you know, provide some services or goods. So, so we're using up resources in order to deliver revenue. And I'm using the word use up here, but notice I'm not using the words pay cash, right? You do not have to pay cash to have an expense, right? You may use something up and then pay for it later. You may use up your electric this month. Well, guess what? That's an expense for this month. It would go in your equity section, um, even though you didn't pay for that bill until next month. Keep that in mind. It's so important to understand that concept, and we'll talk about this theme basically throughout the entire length of the course. We'll talk about this theme, revenue and cash, cash which would be over here in your assets, two different things, expenses and paying cash, two different things. So important to remember that as we go through. So let's look at these examples here and let's let's talk about it. Because here's the first easy example here. We groom 30 dogs at a rate of $40 per dog for $1,200. So there's two questions we're going to ask here. One is, did we collect cash? And it says, yes, we collected cash immediately. So since we did, we're going to increase the cash account by $1,200. Now we got a whole entire separate question we're going to ask. Did we deliver a service? Did we deliver a service at this time? Well, I'm, I, I'm seeing here that I groomed the dogs. Our business is grooming dogs. So we did this work. So yes, we did provide the service. So we're gonna have service revenue increasing, showing an increase in value to our company of $1,200. So I wanna record both of these things, right? And they're two different things and they actually just happen to happen at the same time here. We did the work, revenue. Anytime you deliver a good or service, revenue. You know what else? We also collected cash. So I got to show that my bank account increased. Two different things. Keep that in mind. And then we look at this next question. So the next question. We, we have a contract with two clients where we care for all the client's employees, pets for the month, while the employees are at work. So on January 15th, here's our key data here, January 15th, we provided $6,000 worth of dog sitting and grooming and gave a bill for the services. The clients did not pay us any cash. So there's your key facts. So the first question you usually want to ask yourself is, do we collect any cash or pay any cash? And the answer is no. So we can't put cash... No cash here in the assets section. Um, next question. Did we provide a service? Did we deliver a good or service to our customer? And the answer is yes. And what did I tell you the rule was? If we deliver a good or service, we need to count revenue. So let's do that. And this may blow you away a little bit, but that's this is the concept you need to kind of lock in as we go here. We're going to increase our revenue by $6,000 because we provided the service, but we're not going to increase cash over here. Instead, what's happening is our customers owe us money. And if customers owe us money, that's going to be the accounts receivable account. And that accounts receivable account is going to increase by $6,000. Our customers owe us $6,000 more here. Now my equation's in balance, right? 
I have 6,000 on the left, I have 6,000 on the right. I earned my revenue. I did not collect cash, but actually what I did, I did increase the assets in my company, right? I increased the value of my company here by $6,000 because I own a right to that $6,000. My customers owe me that money. We own a right to that money. So now our assets increased here immediately, which means let's record the revenue now to show that we, um, we increased the value of our company. But the bottom line for you is you delivered the good or service. We delivered a service. You have revenue, even though there's no cash. Two different things, the revenue and the cash. Right? So let's look at the next question here. On January 28, a corporate client purchased a 12-month unlimited package. Right? Now look at the date, January 28. That's when the client purchased the package from us and paid us $24,000 cash. You know, first question I want you to ask on every one of these transactions, did our bank account go up or down? And the answer is, it went up by $24,000. Okay, bank account went up by $24,000. Next question. Did we deliver a good or service when this transaction happened here on January 28th? Did we deliver a good or service on January 28th? The answer, no. No, we did not. So we cannot count the revenue here. No revenue. What did happen? We're going to provide the services starting next month. Remember, we were on January 28th here. We're starting on February 1st, and we're going to end January 30th or January 31st of the next year. So we're going to provide services during the next 12 months. We have not provided any service yet, no service revenue. And this is where you need to use that account that we called deferred revenue. And you may ask yourself, or you may ask me, hey, why is that deferred revenue sitting there in the liabilities column and not in the equity column? It says the word revenue. Why is it not here? Well, we um, the word deferred means delay until later. We owe this these services to our customers over the next 12 months. So deferred revenue, we're delaying the revenue until later. We're going to store it in a bucket and say, hey, I owe my customers $24,000 worth of services. We already collected the cash. But because they gave me that cash, I owe them that service. And that's why that deferred revenue is going to sit here in the liabilities. Right, so these are your three examples with revenue. And you got to look at this. You know, you collected cash, earned revenue. Earned revenue, did not collect cash right? Collect cash, did not earn revenue. You got to, you know, focus on these three examples as you start trying to learn about um, how what we call accrual-based accounting works. And, you know, chapter three does a pretty good job of explaining this also, but these three examples kind of explain it in a nutshell for you. Right now, let's go back to an expense item here. We count expenses when we use up resources. Look at the last one. We paid $1,500 cash to employees for work performed in January, right? So we're in January. We paid the cash. So right there, right there you have cash going down. So, right, so I'm going to go to negative 1,500. Oops, it's up here. Negative 1,500. Um, and then the next question is, did I use any resources? Did I use people? Well, I used the employees, right? They worked in January. And since I used them, I will have a salary and wage expense here. Now, you know, if um, if I paid the cash for work that they did last month, I don't have an expense, right? Because they didn't do the work this month, even though I paid the cash. So that's where you kind of have to keep getting used to this. You don't have to have an expense every time you pay cash. We paid, ca but in this case, we paid cash and the employees worked in January. So we have the expense. One thing to keep in mind, the expense account is increasing here, but we got to put this in as a negative number. Anytime there's an expense in your equity section, you're doing the analysis, you need to show that your equity is going down. It's a decrease, right? Super important to make sure that's in as a negative number. And that also balances your equation. Here's the equal sign. I have negative 15 on the left, negative 15 on the right. Remember, revenues and expenses always in the equity section. All right, so chew on that. Make sure you put those into your um, assignment here at question two. And then the next video will be um, available at question three. Thanks, everybody.